Hello everyone. How are you guys doing? Welcome to the Ziljan India channel and uh, welcome to the 16th and the final episode of season 1 the Ziljan talk with Darshan Doshi. Thank you so much everyone uh, for joining me in the last 3 and a half 4 months. It's been uh, an amazing season. we had some incredible drummers not just from india but from across the globe and uh, thank you for all the response all the messages that you guys have uh, sent me to you've sent it to zilgen india as well it it means a lot to us and we will be back for season 2 very soon so you will hear that an announcement very soon and uh, once again thank you everyone who was a part of uh, season 1 and uh, to end this uh, season we have uh one of the finest drummers not just drummers but pianist composer educator we have the one and only mr gary husband who's joining us today uh i'm sure most of you guys uh, know who he is and you know the stuff that he's done but i'm just going to give a quick intro before we get him <coughs> uh he's as i said he's a drummer pianist composer educator all the way from london for close to about four decades um, gary sir has worked alongside a vast and eclectic range of celebrated musicians such as john mclaughlin alan holsworth billy cobham jeff beck jack bruce gary moore mike stern andy summers trevor horn quincy jones and many more like the list just goes on so it's it's really our honor and pleasure today uh, on behalf of zilgen india to have uh, the one and only carry husband so without any further ado i'm going to invite him and i'm i just hope he's here and he's joined the chat hello everyone hi dirin hi marcelo hi kalp hi raman great to see everyone out here great to see gear house out here brilliant uh, please drop in your questions i have a lot of questions that uh, a lot of musicians have already shared that with me so i'm going to ask them and uh, uh let's see if gary sir is out here uh okay i'm just going to wait for some more time for him to join uh just drop in your questions on the uh in the question box and i i'm, I'm going to take uh, a couple of them from there so yeah Hi Shiv, hi Dev. Uh Hi Bart, thank you so much. Uh Just going to check once again if uh, Gary sir has joined the chat. Can you guys hear me well today? Audio wise all okay, video wise all okay? Just give me a thumbs up so I can I know that everything is okay. Hi Kanu Mishra. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thank you Krishna. I'm glad everything is okay. Uh I'm going to try to add him again. So if you are watching me, if you can send me a request. going to wait some more time for him to join and as you know he's uh he's an amazing composer and uh drummer and he's been to india so many times with the, with the band uh the fourth dimension and uh okay let's see if he's here not yet You must have seen him at the Opera House last uh with the amazing Ranjit Barot, Ethan Mbappe and John McLaughlin. And uh yeah, I'm really very excited of for today's session and I hope you guys enjoy it. It's the final as I said the final session of this season. I'm going to be back again on Zeljin Talk very soon. Just need to take a little break. 
uh, after 16 episodes it's been a great journey with them so so let's see let's try adding him again let's try one more time if he's around try uh, I think he's still waiting I'm just gonna quickly message him and uh, so that he can join the chat thank you Indian drummers I'm glad you guys have enjoyed all the seasons and thank you for sharing and thank you for you know supporting uh, Indian drummers it's awesome uh, thank you Raman good to see you here hi Manome Hi Shiva. Great. We're just gonna wait a little more for Gary sir and once he's here I'm gonna add him. Um uh, just quickly gonna try to message him so that he can join the chat. Also I also wanted to talk about uh do send us your request about what and other drummers that you guys want to see on this uh, show uh, it can be Indian drummers it can be international drummers uh, please do uh, message Zildjian India so that I get the list and I, I really would want to try to get these drummers uh, on the next season so please send in your requests and I will make sure that you know uh, we will get them and have a great chat with them uh, Great, let's try one more time. Uh, let's see if he's here. Gary sir, if you can hear me, if you can send me a request, I'm not able to see you on the chat right now. Uh, if you can just send me a request, that'd be great. How about Zakir Ji would be interested? Yeah, I would love to have him on the show. Unfortunately, he's not a Zildjian endorsee, but uh, I don't think he needs any kind of endorsement. But I will surely try that. Yes, Gavin Harrison is there on my list. Um, I'm surely going to try to approach him uh, next month and let's hope that he's able to join us as well. Okay. I'm quickly just going to go back, I'm going to message him and I'm just going to join in again. So it is here. We're just waiting for Gary Sir to join in. Okay. Okay. Hi, Ketan, if you're listening uh, and if you can just help me out, if you can just uh, quickly message uh, Gary, sir. Ketan Mohite, if you are listening to me, do uh, just give him a word uh, that we are ready for him. Brilliant. Oh, Dave Grohl, Mike Mangini. Wow, these are some uh, amazing names. And uh, yeah, I will surely give it a shot and try to get them on to Zildjian India and uh, hope uh, we are able to get these amazing drummers to our page to inspire us to motivate us it's been uh, the last uh, 15 episodes have been so much fun getting to know these artists at such a personal level uh, so yeah let's just wait another couple of minutes for Gary so Hi Gautam, great stuff. You've been doing some good stuff, man. Keep keep them coming, keep them coming. Yes, Eric Harlan, Ronak, I'm gonna try that for sure. Uh, 
Okay. Let's try one more time if Gary sir is anywhere out here. Okay, I think he's here and I'm gonna try to add him now. The one and only Gary husband. Waiting for sir to join in. Hello, sir. <laughs> we got there. <laughs> yeah, finally, you're here. I was just waiting for you. Uh, nice good to see you. <laughs> My apologies. No, no, no to, problem, sir. I didn't know where to wait, which button to press, and, uh, you know, <laughs> new to all this. I know. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? Thank you so much for uh, accepting our request and being here today. All the drummers out here are very excited to have you. Oh, man. I'm, I'm really excited. You know, I'm nervous now. <laughs> no, no, no. Not at all. Uh, so, uh, sir, how have you been uh, in this, uh, the last four months? I know everybody's at home. Uh, were you on tour when this pandemic ha happened? And uh, how did you manage to reach back home? Oh, yeah. Uh, am I good this way? Is this the right uh, portrait or landscape thing? Or... This is good. It's good. This is good. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Well, all's good here, man. I mean, I'm just trying to... Uh... Music just helps me stay sane. Yes. And a combination of that, and good cooking and uh, walking a lot and um, just just to keep everything um, going because I, I think it's a very hard time um, for all of us just in, in, a, in an inner way, you know, just to try to uh, really keep inner body and soul together. Right. And um, yeah, it's testing time, but... Um, Musically, I'm being very creative. I'm writing a lot of music from the keyboards mainly. And uh, nice. I'm doing some file sharing with my friend Chick Career. <laughs> That's amazing. Really a lot of fun. <laughs> We're doing an improvisational, yeah, an improvisational piece just like bit by bit. So he sends me some and crosses the line and then I play with him and then I cross and then we, you know, go that way. Wow. And... Uh, it, it's it's just great. It, it's it's all part of how music is really the. <laughs> right now, so uh, it's good. All all the good here, and I've been checking out your videos, Darshan. Please, <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're your monster player. I, I very much like yeah, what you're doing, yeah. and I saw you did um, uh, uh, a duet with Ojas too. Who, um, yes, yeah. I love my Indian drummers. <laughs> so, and he's uh, he's really something. I've got my eye on him every day. Yeah. Along with Falgat Maniaya, the Mandangam player, and just, these these maestros are music for my. Soul. These are so such an inspirational figure, you know. Ongoing. I know, sir. So, firstly, so sir, uh, I'm a big, big fan of you. I the minute I, I'd seen you, firstly, uh, I think the first time was at Blue Note uh, in in New York when you played two back-to-back -back shows with Ranjit sir and the Fourth Dimension and everyone. Wow. Uh, it was just an incredible gig. And again, last year at the Opera House. It's like every time it's so much, yes. uh, so much inspiration to see you like to, you know, uh, doing both, both things, not just drums, but uh, like piano and drums. It's, I don't know how you manage it, but it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit schizophrenic, I know, but, but uh, it, it kind of suits me, you know, it's, it's, it's been a long time that way, the two instruments thing and, uh, and as far as that band goes, I have to salute my fellow brothers and maestros on stage. I mean, they are just unbelievable. And with John, sir, at the helm, you know, we, it, it's so inspiring. And it's, uh, it's totally infectious, you know. It, if, if Ranjit feels a certain way and starts... Um, introducing a certain feistiness in his playing, which he's totally prone to doing 
we're all in there with him and it's like whoa where's he going with this <laughs> and 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 the music and the music is such that it's not only great music but it but it but it lends itself and affords us to having a lot of space to create within it and be spontaneous with each other which is just the joy so that when when you when you see the the joy or the shock horror sometimes on our faces like uh, it's for real <laughs> so i mean what 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 better band i couldn't imagine really is is this is dream of a band i hope it continues for a long time yeah how was the experience of doing the lockdown that you guys came up with this track uh, you know and how did how, how did you guys manage to record that and how was it because you, as you said it's so much like you know when i see you guys on stage you know you're kind of uh you know throwing each other so much energy and so much you know uh, like a, a communication on stage and to do something without that is is might would, would have been a little different to you right yeah but it, it it's it's also part of an experience i think we must work hard to to equip ourselves with and develop <clears throat> and it's really an experience that's born of playing with 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 people um in that if those people you know that you should be so close with we should be so close with in a playing environment are not there then it's almost as if we can imagine they are so right. <clears throat> i don't know if it's if it's uh, obvious by the video we're actually all playing individually despite our right. the reactions on our faces and stuff it's all totally staged totally fake <laughs> <laughs> and and we're actually we're we're actually reacting to what we think is going to be there in the end result i mean right. uh, we we were waiting for ranjit to to really because once the drums are in place with it with yes. with a with a kind of spirited music as that is then uh, a lot of it really starts taking shape from him because we 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 follow him right uh, and i understand because we 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 understand darshan so that when we approach the drums it's always different right. and we're yes. in a different mood we're a different place a different stage whatever uh, and we've got different inspirations happening and different influences and that's making us that's 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 really just coming forth with a new ex- expression uh a totally spontaneous one every time but always new you know right and uh so we i think i did some piano and some solos just to so uh ranjit sir could have something to play with play with and then we but of course we i didn't film it so it had to be done again <laughs> and uh the first one actually was etienne he did his part okay but he locked in with some program percussion which which John so sent by way of a sort of sequence with a, right. a logic file with a click track and some some program percussion so uh Etienne got his part good and tight with that like first take great as usual and um and then it was over to us <laughs> you know <laughs> it, but it turned out it turned out good I, it sounds crap thanks yeah. yeah yeah it was You know it's got a bit of the old Miles kind of blue vibe a bit of a blue yeah. blue which is entirely fitting really given that it's a lockdown blues yeah and then um and of course it's got this this fusion side you know in five with 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 the five time signature and uh, Ran, Ranjit's fantastic conno call at the end yes oh. par excellence amazing amazing <laughs> so Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy and beautiful band. I just love the band very much. I think you know, safe to say we all do. And we all miss True. it. We miss it too. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh so so no. coming to uh, coming to Zildjian Symbols because we are on the Zildjian India page today. Uh I wanted to know let's, when did you start uh, uh you know uh using Zildjian Symbols? When did you get endorsed with them and how your experience has been with with them through all these years? Well, I should say if no other symbol for me. I mean, the 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 what goes on there with every development they make 
and at every show stand that I go to and check out new stuff, it's like, oh, the beginning of a whole new love affair with something new. And, um, uh, you know, as, as in regards to how long, I, I was buying my first Zildjian symbols at, what, 15? <laughs> you know? wow. And in the days when they didn't let you try Zildjian symbols in the shop, it was like, because if you started trying them, they weren't new anymore. Right. So they were like, uh, no, no, just look and imagine kind of thing. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and and I, you know, what, I, I just lightly touch it with my finger and one would have it and, and I'd just buy it, you know, and it was a fantastic experience back then. And always reliable because you know you were always going to get something with uh, a lot of character and taking care of what you need. I mean, the, 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 the gamble was really always in ride symbols because you can't really gauge unless you really give it a workout right. or something in that range, a workout. And check out its dis distinction, check out its wash, you know, and, and what you've got in mind for it too. You know, what, it, what are you going to be using it for? And I had a big gig coming up that, it, that I knew that I'd need a lot of wash, but also distinction. So... Um, it was always going to be a 22 ride and uh, pretty much everything I just laid my hands on was perfect. You know, they're so consistent and so beautiful and every single little baby is a one-off and a unique individual. And it's, that's, uh, it's never really changed in all the years. So I'm totally yeah. happy, not looking for anything else, you know. So in, in particular, what series did you start, like when you, when you started uh, using them? Like the K's or the A's? I, I guess they were, well, no, they were A's, I think, um, pretty much in, in, in the sense that, that really they didn't seem to be, I didn't see a lot of K's around in those days. I okay. think they were just, you know, there was very minimal in, information on them. You know, you have to bear in mind, this was 1975. Right. And, um, uh, yeah, I remember 22-inch ride. <laughs> That's all I remember. Yeah. And, or crash ride. There was this kind of in-between. I don't know if they still have it even. But uh, there was always this kind of in-between, which was great because you could get a fair size symbol and use it for, uh, uh, you know, pinpointing accents and, and getting great wash, but also ride in it as, as a change. And then of course their crash symbols were, were, were always great. So I would always be like, you know, 18 inch. I mean, this is, this, this was for the big band, you know? Yeah. And, uh, it was uh, fantastic. The, the, the band leader really loved them. So, and then uh, it wasn't until quite a few le years later, um, must have been around 1983, um, and I'd, I'd become, I'd, I'd established a relationship with Alan Holdsworth, the great guitarist. And yes. we'd, we'd got something really special, at least to us, going on between us and and. This was the beginning of, of, of the real kind of formalized relationship with Zilge in, in, um, in 83. At that time in, in, in Britain, uh, there was a gentleman named Colin Schofield, um, head of the, the A&R, the, the artist relations, artist relations, right. <laughs> division. And they were, um, and he was great. And, and of course, the moment I had the opportunity to at last be able to try things and, and match things up in terms of a set of symbols. Of course, I was, I was just over the moon with that. So um, I have really had no wish or ambition to look anywhere else to, I, I'm always totally happy with since, right. since then. So, What's your current setup the with, uh, the four, with the fourth dimension? What are the set of symbols that you generally use on tour? Um, I take something, well, I, I really pay attention to what's sonically going on, you know? Uh, okay. I think we all do. We're, we're looking for something that 
that blends in a special way and doesn't fight with a with a particular frequency. Yeah. Uh, and I know Ranjitsa has a lot of dark sounding symbols. Yes. So I try to find something that's distinct from that. Um, nice. And invariably, I'm I'm choosing brighter symbols, not especially uh, loud symbols or heavy, in terms of uh, the density of it. it. It's just a change from what Ranjit is sonically offering. So, um, and and I'll take some smaller uh, crash symbols, maybe sixteens or something like this, so that they really okay. have a a space in the, the audio free range to live and not fight with him, his symbols. So that's kind of the way I take that, you know. And, and also that's good for John G because his hearing is little these days. So he hears the higher <laughs> frequencies better. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, yeah. amazing. Okay, we have the so, amazing Kaz Rodriguez on, online as well. Oh, from, from my London, Cass. he's unbelievable. <laughs> he's incredible, yeah. Yeah, he's an incredible player. We we only met recently, and I'm and I'm uh, a huge fan of his, just like I'm a fan of everybody. Really, mm -hmm. we're all out there and being individuals and doing our own thing, which is just such a great language. And and there's and I must say always that this. Um, Contrary to the piano existence, I have to say, drummers is a real family. Yes, <laughs> I mean, we're all we're all in it together. We we all have a real connection. You know, that, I'll never forget the days in the eighties where I was predominantly in America, and we used to hang out with uh, Jimmy Johnson, the great bass player, who we had a great partnership playing with Alan. And he'd do a lot of sessions at the time with with the likes of Jeff Boccaro, Vinny, wow. uh, all the great people. Um, uh, Carlos Vega too, the late Carlos Vega. Uh, yes. I mean, virtually all all the LA drums in the studio scene there, and um, he w he would relay to me, you know, occasions where. Jeff Boccaro would get asked to do something, you know, because it had a certain shuffle feel to it. And Jeff would go along to the studio and, and take a listen to the track and go, you know, yeah, I could give this a pretty good go, but you know who might be really perfect for this? And he'd mention somebody else's name. Wow. Which is just a hugely benevolent thing to do, you know, to, to, to uh, you know, but, but he was talking to represent the betterment of the music, the the, the 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 most the results can give, and he had a particular player in mind who he thought that could could really give it an interesting slant and be very well suited to it. So he'd mention their name and he'd say, "Get them on the phone. Are they free?" And you know they they'd go in and do the session, and and Jeff wow. would give up the session. And, and, and it's this this is what I'm talking about when when I when I mean the real brotherhood and the real family of drums. Yes. You don't get that. I think, you know. Yes. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Even in India, actually, the, the drumming community is very, very strong and we kind of share each other's music and, um, you know, it, it's I so know. much fun, so much fun out here with drummers. I know. Uh, I'm watching uh, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, going back a little in time, uh, if you can talk about your earlier influences and I know like you started off with piano and then I think you moved, uh, like you were learning drums as well or, or drums was pretty much self-taught and uh, the, the main kind of yeah. uh, information was from piano side. Yeah, it was because the, 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 the piano studies were very re regimented and very uh, heavy in terms of discipline as far as definitely technically and in terms of interpretation within classical music. Not that I didn't love classical music and not that the training wasn't good because it was perfect and it stood me in great stead over the years. Um, out of the fact I'm not a huge daily practicer, it's, it's just there, you know, she, my piano teacher formed it in me and I'll be forever grateful for that. But uh, creatively, I needed to be free and and you know at the same time studying classical piano i'm watching 
Mitch Mitchell with Jimi Hendrix and I'm watching Keith Moon and I'm watching, uh, you know, uh, John von Olin with Stan Kenton, which I, which I did in 1972. And he was the one that I knew. I had some kind of experience during a, a 40 minute band television show transmission of that band with that drummer. And by the end of that show, I was going to be a drummer. Amazing. <laughs> no question. And it, it was just like the, the dawning, you know, the grand dawning. Yeah. And it was so spiritual, so big, so colossal. And everything that that guy did in terms of how he'd punctuate the music, how he'd make something poignant, how he'd start building towards a big section in the band and the way the way he'd, he'd create this anticipation and excitement in you. I mean, this is everything I wanted to do. So I went back and told my piano teacher, well, listen, you know, I have to tell you, I'm playing drums now. And she was any more freaked out you can't imagine. <laughs> she was phoned my father and said, that's it. He's out. Oh, <laughs> and she God. refused to see me anymore. Well, well that was fine. You know, I, I was it was a, that was the time it was the time to do that and uh right yeah so this this was this was kind of three years maybe four years after i started studying piano maybe longer anyway uh right. yeah drums came later right but when they so, came uh, it was everything right 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 so as from drummers, yeah. what what uh, other genres of music were you, were you into like when you were growing up as a, as a kid? Everything, yeah. <laughs> everything. And, and if you bear in mind, you know, I was uh, really into creative and, um, you know, a, a, a real fan of this whole jazz rock movement that was happening really sort of early 70s. Right. And um, and of course, when I saw Billy Cobham on TV in 1974, that was also a game-changing moment. Yes. Um, not not on not only because of of the spirit and intensity of what he did, which was a phenomenal experience for me to witness first on first discovery, and then to see it on TV. But the the kind of interesting thing was. I should mention at this point that in 1974, we didn't have video players or recorders yeah. and there was no YouTube. <laughs> so well, sure. when you saw something like that, you saw it once and you prayed, maybe they'll rerun this and make a transmission of it sometime in the future. But, you know, pretty much what I got inside of 40 minutes, that was it. There was there was no right. looking back and seeing it again and playing something over or uh so it was just really uh the essence of him that that really got me. But at the same time I was interested in many other dramas and not only in jazz and fusion, um uh rock dramas and, and even Brazilian dramas because my father was a very big Brazilian music fan. Nice. So I was growing up really hearing a, a lot of different music all the time. So this was, I just came in thinking, well, it's, it's all one, you know, it's all kind of cozy and it's, it's just, uh, the whole thing is, you know, all just one thing, good or bad and, uh, special people and not so special people. And, and, um, this is what I knew about music. Not too many years after that, music started getting very pigeonholed again. People started putting them different areas of music in boxes and everything was very segregated all of a sudden again. Right. Which was like, what's, why? <laughs> we were all having so much fun, you know, right. taking influences from this, taking influences from that, you know, merging it in what you already feel that's, that you're equipping yourself with, that's you're passionately involved with that's becoming part of you and you're developing in your own way and you're taking influences from everywhere doors open what a right. beautiful way really and and to find yourself that way 
right. and, and you know just 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 to repeat you know when you when you see things only once or if you hear things only once they stay with you more in terms of essence and, and the 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 power that really comes over in the essence that you remember and and not specifically anything at all technical or in terms of technical construction or even even the setup you know right. a lot of things you don't remember but you remember what hit you and that's that's i just took that and ran with it so okay. so really in those days you had to kind of work like that you know and, and and start creating from what you imagine or thought it was you know and and in that process you start finding new things so i'm i'm still very much um for that way of, of doing things I haven't really made a practice of analyzing much in in drumming terms or even keyboard terms since it's it's all a kind of fact finding mission spontaneously right Thanks. i also like when i when i listen to you your i i you are so much of billy sir like whether it's the the tuning part and like you know your toms the way you play it it sounds like it it straight away takes me to oh, yeah. to him you know uh so from listening to him like seeing him on tv to actually performing yeah. with him how was how was that and being a part of his band for so many years now yeah yeah it was it was quite an experience i mean he was he was a very different kind of player uh i can say in some ways i mean he he uh, a lot of the the ex the, the excess in his playing which which i always received as kind of emotional excess you know i thought it was this this overdrive which i couldn't resist i i mean i loved the seething intensity of of what he was doing by the time right. i started working with him we're talking 1992 or something so he's he's a very different person he's been through a lot since those heady days of the 70s yes. and um and refined a lot and and changed he shaped his character and you know kind of much different way but he still had the fire and um he still had this excitable thing so that um because we we were playing drum duets while I was in with, with his band initially so we had two wow. sets of drums on stage and um and this was a real special experience that he awarded me to 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 come in and be conversive with with how he played and what he played and of course this was a tremendous thr thrill to be up there with my former childhood idol idols you know very special amazing so, um, it's, it's been incredible yeah i've had some wonderful things so far right uh yeah. so how did how did level 42 happen if you can talk us a little bit about uh, with that band and like you know when did you join with them and how was the experience uh, um it it joined um it it's nearly came excuse me together in uh uh around 1985 but i was most of the time in in america then um but it ended up uh coming together in terms of a like a audition i i don't even remember how it happened but but mark the leader on the bass hits had, yes he spotted my kind of 70s sound you know the 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 carbon the lenny white the tony williams the right. sort of open sound and the tension snare drum and and he he right away responded to that yeah this here's a guy who loves what i love and it's coming from that same place and uh um and he responded to the kind of spirit of of uh, which was very you know flattering uh of the way i was playing and and said we we don't even even need to have an audition you just can, when can you join the band and i'm going like wow well, yes you know and, <laughs> and and i said well we still have another 8 months cuz i was still in america we had another tour with alan and i said i could i could conceivably come in whenever it was in 89 i think and um he said perfect i'll fill in for you until then which wow. was <laughs> really amazing so uh, so i got the the pleasure and the challenge of of stepping into that and 
trying to make that sound good. But they, they, I was always a fan of them anyway because they, they were, they really cut out a niche for themselves, and they were they were pretty much mavericks at the time they started playing. I mean, this you could really not hear on a consistent basis anybody playing regular acoustic drums anymore. Everybody was pro programming up AT style, you know. Right. And uh, and then I'd be in bars, and suddenly they start playing level forty two, and you hear the real drummer with a real sound. You're thinking, wow, who, who are these guys? You know. Right. And um, and that was the way they were going to do it, and and they they hit a lot of popularity, and um, I applaud them, no end. You know, I'll always respect them for that, holding to their own. So they just started building a following, and then I had the pleasure of stepping in um, later on and did what I could. I mean, really, it's Phil Gould's domain that band. Right. In, in my heart, what he established with the original band. It's really basically what they were about. And there's, there was really no bettering that, except for a drummer to come along and recognize what's inherently the responsibilities of playing in a band like that. And right. from that point, you try to make it feel as authentically good as you can and with the same kind of spirit, but, but not impersonate anybody. So... Right. In fact, as a drummer, you'll appreciate this. <clears throat> Mark said to me, you know, I don't... One of his first instructions to me was... Um, because I'd ask a lot, you know, how is it feeling? What can I change? What can I do differently? Right. Uh, you know, do you want more, less? You know, and he'd say, you know, you can be as free as you want as long as you give me a two and a four. Mm -hmm. Now that... It sounds like a very simple piece of advice, but in actual fact, if you start walking around and picturing the kit and envisioning, envisioning yourself being quite free, but always maintaining the two and four, That's it's not right. obvious how you do that. Right. So that was, a, that was always a great piece of instruction from Mark that it really caused me to think and, and um, really consider uh, what my application and, and uh, participation would consist of in terms of the drums and how I'd play with people right. and how I'd try to leave space but also keep the kind of excitement that he really wanted from me. So Amazing. I did my best, yeah. It was a, it was a good period. Right. So, uh, when did you meet John G, and how did the you know the, the whole transition happen to you know uh, working with him, and also like you know understanding Indian music? I know you you know all the conicals and everything. No. Like, <laughs> it's it's amazing how you can like just just pick up so so many things and you know so many uh, even complicated uh, chord ways and conicals and time signature. It's it's incredible. So, when did that happen? I think it had note of my fascination for independence and odd times, which in Western terms was, and in spontaneous terms, or more akin to jazz, and jazz kind of improvisation was best represented by the Mahavishnu Orchestra. Yeah. Now, when they hit the scene, we were hearing... Uh, the kind of fluency and understanding uh, and real um, freedom inside odd times that we weren't hearing, hearing elsewhere. So, certainly in a way that's, that's spontaneous and different from night to night, performance to performance. I mean, you had a lot of the proc bands, which I loved, even the early King Crimson records. You know, you had there's plenty of odd time signature ev everywhere. You know, even right. in TV music of that time, you'd hear odd times but none of it was was really starting to deal with it really in depth and 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 being very emotive and being very complete as an individual and an artist inside of them and, and this was very inspiring to me so as a result i must have about 200 bootlegs of them just well, to hear the differences and, and what they achieved from night to night. I mean, they, they were so amazing for me, you know, and 
and really uh i i didn't really know where to go after that except for follow john to shakti and in there you had a hindustani percussionist and a carnatic one yeah. and and uh, from what i read or or have learned this was not a common occurrence in those days right. for north and south to meet on such a open direct scenario musical scenario True. and um and i was i was just in fact i have an anecdote for you the moment i started buying shakti records i don't i don't know if i rem recognized uh, remembered saying that the group's yeah. name was shakti and yeah. um uh and i was such such an unbelievable fan and uh, once again time signatures and hearing yeah. long extended percussion solos in in 19 or whatever or whatever and just being there and hanging with it learning the curve trying to absorb the curve how it the moment of completion and as in relation to the sum right. and uh and hearing all these commentations and endless variations of brilliance from Vinayakram and Zakia, uh, this was something else. But uh, the, the the anecdote I wanted to tell you quickly was was uh, where I lived in my small beds at, at the time in in London. Um, I found a fantastic uh, Indian vegetarian restaurant, and I okay. got in there, and, and I started hearing real indian music for the first time right uh and of course you know i said to them wow you know i'm i'm also listening to this at home and i have this group shakti yeah. and uh they said uh, uh, do they play indian music and i was like sure <laughs> so they said oh well, please bring bring the records in and we'd like to hear them so i took my copy in of handful of beauty where there's this magnificent uh, gatam solo followed by tabla solo, and um, and I said this is this is the Indian music I'm listening to right now, and they said oh we're we're very interested to hear it and they took away and I went there almost daily because the food was so good, and I went there to collect my record and they said thank you very much sir for this record it was uh, full of delights and excellent music, although. I have to tell you, my friend, this is not Indian music. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. Of course, they heard the Western. I was ignorant and naive to that. I, I didn't right. realize the, 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 the merging there because right. it was so seamless. It was such a naturally True. successful merging and fusion. And uh, of course, the, you know, I took my record and I said, what do you mean it's not Indian music? <laughs> And of course, he was right. He was entirely correct. Yes. It, was a, it was a new form and a new representation of an entirely different kind of music. And, and there they were. So, yeah. yeah. So really, from those records and from that Indian restaurant, all roads led to India. So I was picking up uh, all my favorite South and Northern Indian percussionists and almost learning how to pronounce their name and uh, and becoming so inspired uh, re really in a way that was so consistent and and still am and um, I mean all you guys invest in the beat in the true depth and meaning and poignancy of every note and where it's played and how it's played and what it's followed by is it a silence? Are you going to hit, you know, what? And it's just the most magnificent music. I don't really know how to explain music in words. I don't think any of us do, but that, that's why music's music, because it says what words can, right? True, absolutely. So I'm Amazing. a total devotee to your culture, musical culture and, and all other aspects of culture. Incredible. Uh, so we had and asked maestros, uh, like, maestros like you carrying it on. This is so no. <laughs> please, please, it's it's really and uh, you know an honor that you even saw my video. That's a it's a big honor for me. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. I'm, I'm a big fan. 
Uh, so we had asked some questions to a lot of musicians across here in Mumbai and uh, all across the right. country. Uh, there is this uh, person from Mumbai. His name is Wayne Demello. He said, "How does one reach your level of uh, profi- uh, proficiency on not one but two instruments?" Uh, you have to be schizophrenic. <laughs> 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 no, or maybe Gemini. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll tell you. You know, I mean, just the short answer to it is that for me that the, the both the application to both the instruments took care of my whole desire in music, in terms of expression, what I want to do. So, with the piano, I have composition, I have harmony, I have melody, uh, I have timbres, I have synthesizer, I have ways of building harmony in a way that's pleasing to me. But I have the advantage of all the fluency and understanding and independence that drums give me. Right. Which I can implement as a as a pianist and and use. So the it it almost mirrors who I am as a drummer in the way that I would rhythmically execute on piano. And on drums what the broader understanding of music in general and in even going into western structure and western form and uh, classical music form is so expanding um so much that i didn't really realize that when i was studying both back then but um what i can tell you is that if you get involved it's no easy of course it's no easy endeavor endeavor to to keep both instruments consistently at, at a standard where you can be um, as you want to be and and keep a standard and a consistency going and and this just means round the clock development but uh, round the clock involvement but when I say involvement it's I will be on a train or walking or well not in this. <laughs> <laughs> not in this climate right now right. but uh you know traveling or walking a kind of motion feeling i'll very much be hearing ideas rhythmic ideas and hearing a kind of harmonic counterpoint to them so so much that it it, it starts really broadening your conception of how you can be creative so i i cannot say enough about being involved in in two instruments because it's it's totally expanding but more particular to me it's the complete whole the drums representing one half and the piano representing the other and um and as far as keep keeping both going determination right just determination true absolutely true, true. uh and keeping uh keeping your vision right Uh, there's another question from uh, Manomay Sharma who's asking, "What are your views on music, uh, like college and education, and how important is reading music for a drummer?" Okay, combination question. Well, re- reading music was was probably got to do with the, with the time I was coming up, but I was always really called upon to be able to read. Right. here again with the two instruments reading drum music drum notation was a far simpler experience than reading you know uh, piano music right so really all you're reading is is uh rhythm and the timing of things and 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 some people would write very elaborate drum charts because they'd want to get lay what they were hearing or they'd just write you guard uh, guides rather you know and and they uh, point you know they they make known to you the points that they really want you to nail but they trust you with with how you were going to go about doing it so interpretation right. comes into play so that they're all different kinds of drum charts but but really it was necessary for me to do that um not so much well yeah i can say it still is because when john sersell uh, you know puts together a new composition he'll send it me in not- notation in charts yeah. so i can decide 
decipher the, har the, the harmony, both by listening to it, but also seeing it. So it's, it's a language like conical, your recitation language, that, that I can receive it on that level. You know, the, the same as Ranjita and John can broadcast to each other in terms of conical, a rhythmic right. idea. Which, which, and I see, the, I see, I see the, the freedom it allows them. That it's just one sing through a phrase of a composition, and they've the other one's got it. You know? Right. So as we're talking about yeah, this particular point, there was a, another another yeah. question which was similar to this, which was like, uh, if you can talk about the harmony section of the Lotus Feet, the piece Lotus Feet. Uh, this was by Aditya Podwal, another brilliant keyboard player from Mumbai. In Lotus Feet. Yeah, the harmony, the harmony section that you worked out for the, you know, all the uh, John G's work and Mahavishnu Orchestra's work. Well, in Lotus Feet specifically, the piece E minor with a with a flattened flattened sixth. So you got the the aching emotional flattened sixth there on top of the the E minor fifth. So. Um, really to make it authentic I, I think probably at the Opera House was one of the only times we ever made that was certainly the first time I ever played it with, with John G okay and uh, Niladri was there too yes remember <laughs> yes at the Opera House yeah uh, last year and he did he did a marvelous solo so so I was just, yeah, I was just finding my way on it, on that mode. You know, in the Western terms, we have modes, you have raga. And right. uh, I, I, know you, I know you have one way to go up and another way to come down, but it's slightly freer in the West where we can just, they'll, you can mention if you want to talk in, in modal terms to somebody, you can um, show them a, a tonality in, in those terms. But uh, Really, always I'd rather hear it. But yeah, I always get music from John G. And I also work a lot with, uh, in Northern Germany, for the Norddeutsche Rundfunk Big Band. They have a great big band there. It's a radio right. station. Um, right. Because you know, the, the radio is public funded there. So this, this, this makes for the creation of a lot of uh, ensembles and formations and most commonly big bands in Germany. And whenever I go there, um, I will get uh, a folder with music inside it. No idea whether it would be abstract or Count Basie style or brass band style or operatic or what it would be at all, except to just have a quick look over the charts see forms how many bars is that what's happening in there oh yeah okay so you've got a loose induction to 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 that but only that and you don't know what it's going to be like until you start playing it 20 minutes later so right. um, th this right. is this is a real valuable experience for me each time going there because i have no idea they don't even tell me when they book me what it's going to be so you just go along and you find your way in it in right. that moment and get it together so the reading is and of course if you're playing piano uh, um, I'm cross-currenting on the questions now but of course if you're composing and writing you you have to be able to notate so right so uh, how would you recommend going to like a, you know uh, like a music school or a music college like you know a Berkeley or you know a London school of music and stuff like that uh, well when I was young I I had my heart set on going to trying to go to Berkeley because I knew that it was prime I think at that time it was the only really established and uh, school of that standard which involved it itself in the education of jazz but in a sense uh in in a sense looking back I'm kind of glad I didn't do it because right. uh, you know basically because everything I wanted to discover about jazz was based in my own imagination and discovery. So yes. self-discovery, ideally, you know, what am I going to do over a chord? What says something? 
Hi guys, uh, welcome back to part two. Uh, I think we just finished an hour so that the session expired. Uh, we're gonna try to add him back again and uh, let's hope he's here. We're gonna try to add uh, him back again. Uh, the, the session expired because we finished about an hour so let's hope he's here thank you guys for joining again i'm gonna see if he's here hi adi good to see you here i'm just gonna try to add gary sir back so that uh, we can just finish the conversation with him. Okay, let's hope he's here. Okay. Try to add him back. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Instagram has a thing of, you know, it finishes the session in after one, uh, after 60 minutes. So I had to just restart it again. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're just, we were still just looking about... Ever useful and <laughs> handsome there, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, talking about Berkeley, as you said, you were happy that you didn't go to the college and you yeah. kind of, you know, you were there. So let's, we just have another couple of questions yeah. to finish up. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. No, I was happy, personally. I mean, a lot of people um, like to form in music and, 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 and put a lot of importance on making transcriptions and studying transcriptions of other people. But, you know, using this as an example, I never wanted to put somebody else's spontaneous improvisation into my muscle memory. Right. I had a problem with that. And yeah, it's interesting to analyze how a person moves around a lot and how intricate their improvisation is. But I, I really didn't want to know. I wanted to try to create it from and be inspired by the majesty of what they did, but not know what they were doing. So it, it, in actual fact, school was not really the ideal answer for me. Right. But, but uh, you know. Yeah we're all we're all different with that you know it, it's I, I i'd rather discover i'd rather leave the doors open to discovery that, that's just my way that's amazing uh there was another question by a very dear friend jarvis menezes who's one of the finest uh, keyboard players in the city uh, he he wanted to know a little more about your rig, which is uh, not keyboards. And do you use the inbuilt sounds, or it's most of the time external sounds? Oh, with the well, um, sometimes I'm seen playing a, a Nord stage piano, uh, uh, but up until this point, I, I always press for a Roland stage piano, an RD okay. three hundred, seven hundred, whatever. Uh, simply because in playing terms, if if you have a as a keyboard player with a something approaching a, a classical technique, a, a well formed technique, the the Rollins seem in that regard very much superior to me. So I always ask for something that I'm comfortable playing in terms of what the action gives you. Um, uh, but uh, the synthesizer that you see with John's band, I've pretty, got, I've pretty much got two Nordlead 2X. And they're getting pretty old now, but they're very tough and hardy instruments. But, but the wonderful thing is um, they come with sounds that are basically a template, but, but you can really uh, personalize them vastly you can really take them and completely change their character and and discover a lot you know due to the what's inherent in the template that they've given you in a sound and right. uh, that's that's really the, the 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 ultimate for me 
I like to just find things. And, and a lot of the sounds that I'm using have come from um, uh, just the beginnings of the sound that was very, very different, that sounded very different in nature when it was, you know, the machine, the, the factory sound that came with, with, with the 2X. And, right. uh, you know, and there's a reason for this. It's just preference, of course, what you, how you, you want to express, how you want to be expressive in your sound and music and playing. But also I'm, I'm always on a mission to get a sound that, that blends with John's. Uh, so a sound that really, because I get to play a lot of melodies on synth while simultaneously playing usually electric piano harmony, um, I'm doubling a lot of his melodies. So it has to be always a sound that's different but and and suited to the piece, but blends with the guitar well. So right. there are all these kind of considerations that, that make up why that I, I've got these sounds sounding like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy. The, the stage piano that I use actually doesn't come, I never use the stage piano sounds. I use contact. Right. And they've, they've got some nice electric pianos. I got New York grand piano from them, which with the minimum of tweaking, I have a great piano sound, great, good samples and stuff. And uh, I've been using that for many years now, I keep refining it and getting it better. But yeah, it's a contact organ, contact electric piano, contract, uh, uh, contact, <laughs> contact, uh, contact um, acoustic piano. And the, okay. the Nord is standalone. I have to take that because there's no USB and uh, it's kind of stubborn. It, now they've changed a lot. You can, you can right. download with, with ease to a cloud and whatever. But, but uh, with this, they, they have some kind of, uh, they call a SysX dump, a system exclusive dump, which is something you can put in your logic and, and if you can find a 2x, which is really hard, uh, you can upload your sounds to that. Uh, but it's really hard to find a 2x these days. So I end up taking my 2x on tour every every time. Just, okay. Is it also yeah. a similar setup? So this is about Zildjian symbols, settings? and we're talking to all these micro <laughs> keyboards. Uh, yeah, I know. There's all, for you, it's like always a mix of keyboards and drums. So it's like you you got to just keep musicians happy with that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Great, great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Sorry, you were saying something? There was, there, yeah, well, I was just saying that was it a similar setup for your studio uh, recordings as well when you do it with fourth dimension or it, it kind of changes in the studio sessions? Oh, it changes in the studio sessions, yeah. Uh, most. Uh, most evidently with because uh, uh, there's usually a chance to use a, a really great piano acoustic piano right. for the acoustic sounds um for the electric it, it's 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 great to be able to find a, a roads in good condition and you know do it that way <clears throat> right. but uh, i've recorded actually a lot of my uh contact sounds for for things like Black Light and those later records we did and, and stuff. And right. um, they're, they're such in the mix that they, they, they sound pretty good for it, you know. Uh, I would always rather go analog in the real thing, you know, for these yeah. things, but, but hey, it's, it's what the luxuries provide us with. And, uh, you know, if we can get a good studio with great old school instruments, so much the better. Right, right, right. Wow, there's a lot of people joining in now also. There's a, my very dear friend, Mana from Biona Airs. Uh, thanks, Mana, for joining in. Uh, so if you can talk us about the project with, you know, incredible to have both of you in the, on, on like the same uh, platform. How was that? How did how did that come about? Sorry, I lost you for a minute yes. then. Yes, with Benny Greb, the, the the single that you did with him. Yeah, uh, well, actually, it's, it's, I think it's about four tracks. Four tracks. And uh, yeah, we see them on the, you can get them on the Spotify. But <clears throat> um, this was, this was an idea born out of um, 
that came from Benny and uh, his enthusiasm for the, the duet that Brad Melda and um, Mark Juliana did together. Mark, yes. So, you know, and he was sort of thinking, oh yeah, I could, you know, let's let's see if we can, you know, come up with uh, a, an interesting duet kind of situation. And he called me on that. I'd known him for a little while and been an admirer, obviously. And um, we got it together. We, at, we pretty much, uh, you know, we were talking about old school instruments. I had a, I did a, I had a Honor D6 through a, a Wawa pedal, like a clavinet, original old school clavinet with a Wawa wow. pedal that you hear on that. And of course, an old, uh, an old Rhodes. I think you see evidence of it anyway on the video. Right. On the video. And, um, I, I don't think I touched my Nord for those. It was like the old, old, the real old stuff, you know. And and that suited because uh, you had a Benny's got a fantastic engineer there, the real maestro, and um, we came up with some sort of moods and, and ways of connecting, which was really. I was only there for three days, and we just wrote these things on the moment. Let's do a section of this. Let's repeat that section here. Let's do this and really got it together. And then the final day, of course, we had to come up with versions of playing them for the moment the film guys and the photographers come in. Of course, everything's on their terms. So, right. you know, forget <laughs> the, the music's like secondary, but that's okay. And, and we, it looks visually great. And, uh, I was very happy with what we came up with. It was a great opportunity to do something different. I hope we'll do right. some more. Yeah, it sounded amazing. Uh, okay, Thank last you. couple of questions. Sir. Just, uh, you know, you, you're doing something with uh, your podcast now. You're doing a lot of education stuff as well. If you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm doing it um, really as an extension from some of the things that we covered today in regards to education particularly um, the what I mean there are a lot of drum teachers out there phenomenal people offering I mean it's everywhere right. online so you know how to come up about it differently um, I thought about really just trying to come at everything in terms of being an individual you know I'm not making myself out to be you know it, it's just that the way I've formed is, is very much akin to a kind of personal formation, uh, uh, a formation of, uh, of my own preference, of, of the way to go and the ways to follow and my inspiration and the way I want to go and the way I want to sound and keep getting better. So I devise a lot of exercises that facilitate that. But uh, as an example, really to other drum students through the Gary Husband video casts, which we've been working very hard on, is one really that it's, it's less about me than it is about the individual watching. Uh, in, in, an, in an endeavor to try and inspire people to just think, if thinking is part of it, to just feel more akin to their own desires and start getting a little more in tune with their, their own imagination and design, which is there in all of us. You know, it's just a question of tuning into the little voice inside, into your creativity and finding like, what have I got ideas to do? And you can do it in a number of ways. Have a lot of solitude, out of silence, contemplation. You can start hearing things. And uh, as I said before, movement helps me to be walking briskly just I get like a onslaught of ideas coming and I wanted to really represent all this side of approach by these video casts with with the emphasis not really being on me but but to encourage uh, more creativity and less perhaps following of everybody else and you know in in terms of what we're all doing you know and and really believe in yourself as as a, as a separate creative entity and and, uh, and a new force that you can foresee yourself being and invest mm -hmm. everything into it and believe in it and, and keep uh, 
keep going with it. Keep strong about it and, and uh, be very uh, sure of what you're doing and, and, you know, all these kind of messages. So that, that's equally as inherent to these videos um, as much as any kind of uh, technical application is concerned. Uh, but I hope the 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 full roundedness of of it all um, is obvious to people how I'm coming at it and where I'm coming from, and uh, I've had a lot of very pleased to say a, a lot of people have been very inspired about it. A, a big factor is it that um, I'm invariably giving a track, either it's a track of my own making, which I'll put together here at home. Uh, or a track of an album that I've played on minus drums. And you get uh, a PDF chart, you get click track, stems, you can create your own mix and produce your own, um, which is really my, my uh, this is where I like to, to you've imagined and no need to copy anything of what I'm doing or what you've heard on the original. You know, go for it yourself. It's a new opportunity for right. you to be creative. Be with the results posted and, and we, you, we all start finding out more about ourselves and coming into contact with our Losing desires. Losing you for a second. Uh... And, and I like that idea. So that's, that's where I'm coming from. Nice. Uh, so, what up about your your upcoming projects now? As you you said, you had something with uh, with uh, Chick Corea coming up. Uh, you know, if you can talk about your upcoming stuff, which is happening this year. Uh, well, I don't know, even know if um, this stuff with Chick is will will see the light of day. I, I hope it will, because we're certainly getting extremely heavy into it now. Uh, we're getting very file heavy on our laptops. Uh, we've been uh, taking a, an idea and running with it to a particular point, and then I sent a chick, and he plays up to it to that point and then further. So that gives me a chance to jump in where he is and then go further and create an extension onto that. So it's it's just an ongoing, really fun and creative uh, endeavor between us both, and it's. Uh, it's a real thrill, I tell you, and 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 of course it's a it's a real pro uh, it's a real product of of lockdown, isn't it? It's where we yeah. all are, and 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 it's the way to start being involved in music, and and also of course it 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 keeps you socially in contact as well because we're talking a lot by phone and sending videos. So I mean it's uh, it's really inspirational. So I hope. Some people will get to hear that at one time. But uh, I'm also working on um, doing some solos for people who ask, and uh, which is great. And uh, I guess like all of the keyboard players out there are doing. Uh, drums I cannot record at home, regrettably. regrettably. Um, but we'll, we'll get there as this whole thing eases. And uh, I'm writing for an album, uh, which will be this one concept that I've spoken about uh, a little bit recently where I'm putting percussion artifacts around the piano and attempting to be uh, simultaneously involved in music, wow. uh, you know, creative playing that way, which is no, I mean, I've had dreams about it where I can do it. And sometimes that's enough because if, the, well, <laughs> if I dreamt it, then it means it can be done, you know? <laughs> So this is this is a real. I'm I'm chasing something with this. So I'm um, I'm gonna see how it comes about. So, yeah, I saw your, I saw your setup with like drums and keyboards together. It, it was it was looking crazy. I don't know how how you you manage it, but it's it's incredible. It's incredible. I think you put out that video, that first video. It was my very first attempt at it. I, I actually okay. had. Woke up one day, I'm going to do it. I phoned the studio. I took the drums. I took the keyboards. Put it in the rehearsal room PA. And put things where I thought I might want them to be in terms of how to place things. And it's like, okay, let's have a jam and see what happens. <laughs> because 
I, I, I'll find something. If, if it's there to be found, I, I'd like to try and just put myself in the situation and see where it leads me, see what comes. And if nothing, <clears throat> I'll try again until it makes a formal statement to me. No, this is not going to happen. Uh, give it up. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm, I'm quite stubborn and I'm not a quitter and I'm not a compromiser. So I'm going to work and get something regardless of what people say. <laughs> but but, but this, this video was the first attempt. Yeah. So we're wow. already a new place. Really, really excited to hear more from, uh, from that setup for sure. Thanks. And, uh, you know, Thanks. thank you so much, sir, for joining in today for your time and, you know, for, for such amazing stories and your kind words. Uh, you know, a big thank you from Ziljan India and myself. And we really hope to see you soon again in India, in Mumbai, uh, you know, and see you perform with John G, Ranjit sir and everybody. Well, I, I tell you, I can't wait to be there again. And, and when you see me, you will always see me playing Ziljan. Yeah. That will never be in question. I, I hope this never, ever changes. So it's it's wonderful to be talking to a, to a faction of the, the great company and uh, it's been great rapping with you and I'm a fan of you and yeah. you carry yeah. on the great yeah. work too, okay? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So, yeah, that was the amazing Gary Husband. Uh, incredible human being uh, and so much to learn from these masters. Uh, He's not just just an amazing musician, but you know, uh, such a down to earth human being and uh, so humble. So, thank you so much, Gary, sir, once again for joining us. Thank you, everyone who's joined in. Thanks, Adi. Thanks, Marcelo. Hey, my friend Greg Ellis from LA. He's here. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Manchu. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you know, it's been a great uh, uh, last about three, four months with uh, Zildjian Talk. And I'm just going to take a small break and we'll be back uh, hopefully in September with some amazing artists. Thank you so much for joining in. Please send in your requests uh, for the drummers that you want to see on the show. And I'll make sure that, uh, you know, we will have them and, you know, get inspired and motivated and, uh, you know, go through these tough times, you know, in a, in a, in a very positive way. So thank you so much, guys. Stay safe and stay at home. Cheers.